Hello. Hello. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, so, oh, okay. it's very important that we uh, are heavier on that side of um, telling students when they're meeting those expectations, when they are um, showing us those preferred behaviors, because we're we're definitely going to be harder on ourselves than. Um, and it's just kind of how our brains are wired to remember more of the negative than the positive, okay? So that's not to say, again, that corrective statements don't happen. They definitely do. Mm -hmm. That's part of shaping humans, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they're, they're both going to occur, but for every one corrective statement, we wanna offset that with, um, we'll, we'll strive for four of those affirmative statements. So this can look like lots of different things, but a research-backed um, strategy for the affirmative statements is behavior-specific praise, which is what we're going to talk about today. And you can use the expectations and the specific behaviors that you identified last time as your foundation for your behavior-specific praise. Okay. Quote. Yeah, absolutely. So remember during office hours, we, so there's that, the time that it happens, right? Office hours. Mm -hmm. We show that we're helpful. So if you go down to helpful and go to office hours, we show that we're helpful by being mindful of our surroundings and supporting others learning. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can use the specific behaviors that you've already defined here as a way to encourage students to meet those expectations, mm -hmm. okay? And so if you remember from last time we talked about pre-corrections where we, we want to uh, be proactive about these things and pro provide those reminders before any sort of quote unquote misbehavior might occur or things that we, we don't want to see. Um, when we use behavior specific praise, it can actually provide that, that instance of a pre-correction for students. And then when students show us that they are, let's see, taking initiative during a class, we can say, you are thriving today because you came with your work, you are taking initiative. Great work, okay? So you have a, you have a whole list here of lots of different praise statements that you can use with the students in your program. And here's just um, some more ideas of different ways that you can incorporate it. Um, to see if, when, it, when it can apply, okay? And the last one there, using a visual, this can be your visual. Mm -hmm. okay, for you and for the students. Mm -hmm. So, when we look at behavior-specific praise, there's three parts of it, okay? The who is being praised, that could be an individual or a group of students. Um, so if you're working with, with a few, few students during office hours, then you can say, y'all are working really hard today. I can see that you are advocating and communicating your needs today. Great job being socially skilled. Um, or it could be a student that maybe has struggled in the past, and so you're working on using supports that are, that are provided for that student during advising. And so you could say, you know, I, I know in the, in the past we've struggled for you to use all the supports that you have available to you, but I can see you starting to do that, and that's really great. That shows me that you're working on thriving when we're in advising time. So <clears throat> the who, that praise piece, good job, thank you for nice work, you're working hard to any of those kind of approval or kind of compliment type statements mm -hmm. and then the specific behaviors that you've already outlined here okay so what I would like to do now is um, give you some time to talk to each other and to to work if you would prefer to work on your own and develop some of these statements um, to see to make it a little bit more natural and just practice developing behavior specific praise. So I'm gonna keep this slide up so that we have, um, have that as an example of what should be included. And then you can use the paper that you have or you can you know, just think of them, um, whatever you need to do to, um, 
think of some behavior specific praise statements based on the specific behaviors you've identified here. Okay, so if you want to work on your own to do this, you definitely can. If you want to talk to each other, if you just want to do it as a whole group, whatever you all prefer. <laughs> And you're talking activities to take your notes and advocate when you need help. That's yep. a lot of ground. <laughs> <laughs> That's a yep. lot of specific positive praise. <laughs> and it was actually honest. <laughs> that one was yeah. legit. It may not necessarily in your office or whatever your area. But I do if you want to ever ask for help. <laughs> so, uh, David, I can give you one now, okay? Oh. I, Andrea, I see that you are being very professional. I noticed you have <laughs> <laughs> yeah, small efforts of lay off. Do you have any ideas? Trying to pull one out. Maybe we're in the bathroom. <laughs> this yeah. family yeah. event yeah. is going to be Because yeah. all the cousins are hosting it, not in none of the yeah. <laughs> Does it get worse? Okay. Yeah, it well, I'm also trying to do a nice job. We're looking at incorporating that specific behavior, too. All right. So. Cool. All right. So I heard lots of awesome examples of that. I saw you referencing the matrix and. Um, yeah, really great job. <laughs> so a little bit of behavior-specific praise for your behavior-specific praise. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> we also talked, um, I think I saw in your thing about like praising them, that like kind of like the full, I guess, you know, for like every negative thing you say like three positive things. Yeah. I guess you have like every one negative but, thing, it's four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the same. Same, same thing. Just a different, affirming is, saying positive yeah. that's an affirmation is something positive yes. it's the same exact yeah. same exact principle yeah so the behavior okay. specific praise fits under that affirmative, affirmative. part of things okay. yeah um, are we doing that with thank you for, i this, should clarify that sorry we're doing it with these right we're using our yes when you the the time you just spent practicing those statements mm -hmm. is is preparing you to have a heavier side on the affirmative, affirmative. Mm -hmm. being oh, yeah. more of those positive statements okay. yeah thank you for asking that question i didn't make that very very clear so yeah behavior specific praise definitely fits under that side of things the four to one side Awesome. Any other questions? So the cool thing about behavior specific phrase, we did that part, forgot to click. <laughs> so um, behavior specific praise is free, yeah. right? It doesn't require any other resources, but a little bit of thought as to what you want to reinforce, right? What you mm -hmm. want to uh, give your attention and um, your praise for, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, it's focused on the positive, right? So it's more of that affirmative side of things. Mm -hmm. And it identifies those behaviors, like I said, that you want to see again from the students. Mm -hmm. It can also, like I mentioned earlier, act as a pre-correction for other students who maybe aren't showing you those things. Mm -hmm. So for instance, in a class, if you have students who maybe aren't taking notes or didn't come prepared for the day or didn't dress professionally whatever might have happened mm -hmm. you can you can give some behavior specific praise to students who did show you that and it can help to shape other students behavior over time so it can act as that pre-correction for other students yeah they're gonna be like oh i need to step up to my game yeah so i can yeah. receive yeah. that too yes what happens yeah. if they don't care because that's yep. just something that, <laughs> and like just this, just the newer age group, uh -huh. people don't care how they look. Yeah. You know, like I could say you look very lovely, mm -hmm. but yeah. you know I could be like I just want to wear a yeah, shirt and well, pants, yeah. and that's it. Yeah, I don't want to wear a dress. I don't. I'm good, glad for you that you're wearing this. <laughs> that's crazy. I'm good. She's, but yeah, that, she's officially fully gone. So, off. so the reinforcement for that individual might be a little bit different. You might have to find something 
um, that they are going to want to work for. Praise and things like this doesn't work for every person, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't like being acknowledged for the things that we're just kind of expected to do, right? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so it might mean that you have to figure out some other strategies with that, with that individual too. And it, and it might mean, you know, here's why this is important for that specific um, example of not dressing professionally, um, making it personal and important for them and taking the time to be like, you know, we dress professionally because we want to make a good impression. It, it helps us, you know, present ourselves well, whatever it might be, so that, you know, just making it more personal and important for that person. So that's okay. a great question. Um, and then the, that last point there, like I said, you can use it with one person, you can use it with a group of individuals, um, and that's, it's, you can take it anywhere, it's free, it's a really great strategy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and the, the four to one ratio isn't just for students and learning, that's a human thing. We are hardwired to notice the things we don't do right more than the things we do. So it's helpful when those around us are also acknowledging those things that we are doing well. So. What if you're in this um, scenario in the statement of that you have to tell a student that they did a negative thing mm -hmm. and you can only come up with two positives. Is that okay or do you expect to do yeah. three or four? Yeah, that's a really great question. So like I said, those corrective statements are going to have to happen, right? We're, mm -hmm. we're helping shape behavior and shape learning. Yeah. Um, so you do want to pretty quickly follow it with, with something that is positive. Mm -hmm. um, but as long as over time, it's heavier on the positive. It doesn't have to be right after. Okay, that's yeah. good to know. Yeah, and that like would be a little bit un like unnatural. If yeah, <laughs> that's what I was wondering. You're like, well, this went, this didn't go so well, but here's the A, B, C, and D that yeah. you did really like. That's not so super natural. Make, so maybe but, like throughout the day, you see something yes. and you say something. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, right, because I was throughout the day. Yeah, because yeah. I was wondering when to bring in the positives. Like versus that negative. Like, yeah, and we, we do want them to be, be genuine. When you are seeing them. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, we do want them to be genuine for sure. Yeah. For sure. You don't want to just make up something on the fly, but when, when you catch yeah. somebody doing something positive, go ahead yeah. and acknowledge that. Okay. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know if you had to do it like right after you give them the negative and be like, well, we at least did this right. Yeah. You, so. you do want to be mindful of when you do have to provide mm -hmm. that corrective mm -hmm. so that you can look for something eventually mm -hmm. to acknowledge that went well or was positive, um, but it doesn't have to be right after. Okay, good so to know, thanks. Super, super good <laughs> questions, yeah. yeah. So just over time, maybe across the day or across an hour or whatever your kind of time frame might be, we mm -hmm. want it to be heavier on the, that's when the four to one. Okay. Yeah. Cool. It doesn't doesn't have to be right after. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I was thinking. It was like right after. I'm just like, oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I need one more. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I will say, in you get where I'm coming from. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. It is hard to get in the practice of doing the four to one. Mm -hmm. So um, it's going to take time, and it's just going to take consistency where that it's just going to come a lot naturally a uh, lot, lot more naturally the more you use it all right um and so if at, at first it's more of like a two to one that's okay we can work up to that four to one and that's just that's based on a lot of very scientific research right doesn't necessarily mean that's what is happening in practice if that makes sense yes so just as long as you're mindful of attempting to be more on the affirmative side of things. Okay. Yeah, nobody okay. likes to be criticized constantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just doesn't feel feel good, right? Yeah. So that's really what to, we're getting at here. I try to give compliments when I see them, when I notice them. Yeah. Most Yeah. That's great. Okay. And it and I would say in one of my uh, other things is um, if it's especially if it's something that a student has really struggled with 
and you're seeing even a small amount of progress, acknowledge that for okay. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you do acknowledge all the positive things, that when you do have to do the critical, they're more trusting and are more willing to listen to you because you've always been positive and shot straight with them to be able to. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to add that to my slide because it's such a great point <laughs> that this helps build positive relationships. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. It's another person taking your stuff, Shirley. Because, if, <laughs> you know, like if I say someone, something to someone, I the same that thing. one free and willingly. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> say it again. That's kind of a yep. standing joke with us. Because yeah. if someone From somewhere else. who is not as mm -hmm. kind credit for a lot of stuff that I used mm. to do, they okay. <laughs> well, I give you full credit. Yeah, I, <laughs> that no, was your I, point. I, you know, I, I gave that one free. Based on a lot of experience. So. Mm -hmm. All right. And so some other things that you can use to reinforce behavior. So maybe you have a student that doesn't like those comments, right? Or doesn't like attention being drawn to them necessarily. Mm -hmm. So you can use other strategies too. Um, and so for a student like that, I would say something more along the lines of like, like you said, caught being good, um, acknowledging maybe privately and not publicly um, that they're making that progress. Um, and the, again, these are the things that um, you definitely have a choice as a program as to what you use, um, but it can be in PBIS rewards and, and things like tickets or caught being good type things um, are often part of that structure. Um, and so, take or leave it, <laughs> I guess. Um, so, how would you use it in a college? Like rewards yeah. in college, how would you do it? Because most, you don't get tickets in college. Oh, yeah, you can. None that I have, so. You could, if, if that was something that you wanted to uh, work toward as a program, you definitely could. So it could be, you know, teachers have it during when they're in classes. Mm -hmm. um, advisors have it during advising. Um, and it's, it, um, we use them in other trainings that I've done. We use literally raffle tickets and they, for participating, for asking questions, for taking notes, for working in groups. Um, we are always going around and using tickets and then at the end of that day for that training, we have a drawing. And it's for, you know, something that they can use in the classroom, mm -hmm. right? Because we do teacher trainings, okay. so. Conferences and yes. different things like that where they've done that and use the little tickets. Yeah. And, yeah. and the other thing we could do are those little badges that we already have Ooh, built yeah. in the team. Yeah. Okay. And badges Ooh. Ooh. Are caught, yeah, go out and, mm -hmm. you know, maybe at the end of the semester, some of those little free items, like all the extra little water bottles that I have in my office mm -hmm. and things like that, that we pick up, little fun free things, they could, I, you know, we can put a box together of fun things that we picked up along that that way that they could go in the prize box to get. You know. yeah. But it does mm -hmm. We could build into the budget, you know, some kind of little fun or something. That's what mm -hmm. I'm Even if it was a $5 see, gift card to like Sonic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, the students yeah. loved the students loved it during the summer when they had this training. Um, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that was the training I was talking about. Yep. Yeah. Let's <laughs> yeah, we'll all go there. Yeah. <laughs> we did do the students recently, did something like that mm -hmm. in the training. Yeah. But recently we did do one, which I think it went really good. For we had a Halloween party, mm -hmm. and we told the students as a reward, everyone in the class had to be able to turn in all their assignments, be all on time. time. Mm -hmm. You know, and as a reward, it was you got I had a Halloween party. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's like, another great strategy. Everyone is we have big terms for that in behavior analysis, and I will skip that. But um, <laughs> that everyone has to show that in order to earn that specific reward. And yeah, then, and then your peer pressure been to doing the right things <laughs> too. Or getting Not the a, a bad peer pressure, a positive mm -hmm. peer pressure. Right, right. Yeah. Hey, we are all working together toward this goal. Builds up a team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure, for sure. Yeah. So. Um, Maybe we can 
eventually get to a point where we could be like do a pizza party one month or something mm-hmm. if everybody turns it's in right, all their homework a, is on track and it does yeah. really well then they all earn a pizza but party but like I said yeah. for personal ones little five dollar here and there mm-hmm. gift cards to McDonald's mm-hmm. or Sonic yeah, we had those and we had these in that we actually had that at our high school that was Miss Black and they would earn tickets and they during the week if they were doing their work if they were to, we actually implemented this in the classroom they worked so hard to get those tickets and, and wanted to be striving for those tickets mm-hmm. because once they had of course for her they had more chances to get more tickets when they had a hundred tickets she had five dollar gift cards Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? And that was the number one thing she would just have. And that's all it was, was five bucks to McDonald's or Sonic, and they would have a choice between the two gift cards. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And that, you know, if you built that into the budget where it wouldn't be like a ton of them, where it would be at the end of the semester, you know, you would have, have a large amount of it, then they work towards that large amount to get that $5 gift card mm-hmm. of appreciation. I mean, come on, who of us in here wouldn't appreciate even a $5 Starbucks? Oh, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's one drink, really like but that. it's still, that's yeah. one free drink that I've earned. And I it's still good. That's oh, yeah. Thing I don't even get you a whole drink anymore at Starbucks. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. but yeah. I love it. I love it's it. Like, yes. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. She's saying, you get a small cup of ice and a straw. Yeah. She's saying, put $10 on. But no, I completely agree. They only pay one more dollar. Right. Yeah. That's why I don't do Starbucks anymore. I do the Harvest now. Oh, yes. Oh, it's so much cheaper. Yeah, so I think those are all really great ideas. Um, and I love that it was um, crowdsourced for those ideas um, because I, I don't know your budgets. I don't know, you know what you already have in place. It sounds like um, with working toward that Halloween party, that, that this could be a strategy that would be really effective mm-hmm. for students. Um, and. The other thing about that is you could pick one of these expectations that you focus on for a week or a month. You could say, okay, we are going to work on being accountable for the month of November. Mm -hmm. And so um, that is what you work on um, identifying and reinforcing for students. And so it could be like, you could, um, hey, you did a really great job turning in all your assignments this week. Here are, you know, two tickets or whatever you decide is that reinforcement uh, system. Um, And one other one that you can use is um, a program called Class Dojo. Before you go to that one, I was going to ask you, so if we were to do that one, mm-hmm. um, will it be just like in the classroom or we all need to be reinforcing that everywhere, like accountable? like in Yeah, the, that it depends how you, des- you design it. If you, if you want students to show these things mm-hmm. in all of these settings, then I would encourage you to reinforce it in all of those settings. Okay. But also, on the other side of that is, if you're seeing a certain one of these behaviors struggle, Mm -hmm. like maybe students are really having a hard time being accountable in their their independent living space, then maybe you just really focus on that Mm -hmm. for that setting. It just depends on on what you think is best for the program. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of flexibility there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sorry for interrupting. No, 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 that's okay. I just wanted to say that the class dojo, it being a digital thing, that can help facilitate it being in lots of different settings. Mm -hmm. So it's just each. What is the class dojo? Yeah. It's um, a reward system, but. It is, yes. And so it's just a way that you can give tickets that are kind of like points on on a, a system that every every instructor could have access to um, or advisor or right. any one okay. part of the program can have access to it and then they can add um, tickets for a student and you can name them the different things if you want so um, if you're interested in that I can I, definitely tell you more about it I just wanted to make sure it got on there so I didn't forget like so there a subscription to it that you have to pay oh that's my next question <laughs> um there might be but if it's a small enough group it might be it might I know there's a a free account 
Or I wonder if Foreign you can like build something similar on Teams, Melanie. That's what I'm looking at right now. I use Class Dojo in high school. It's kind of cool. The students get to design their own little own little characters, and everybody's in like a little group. And then whenever you award a point, their character gets like a little point on their little thing. And if you yeah. can, if you get a certain number of points, you can unlock little like customizable things for your characters. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, we have a, you have an in-house expert, so <laughs> <laughs> that's the the same one that you were talking about. Mm-hmm. Class yeah. Dojo. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, every every student gets like their own little avatar character person, mm-hmm. and yeah, it's pretty neat. Oh, okay. And it Looking could cool. help facilitate the fact that this happens in all these different settings. Mm-hmm. It could it could help with that. So. I do think there is like a I think it is subscription based though. So yeah, but your program is it the I, how many students are in the program? Twenty seven. Oh yeah, I think it would. Um, it would be a minimal cost for that size of students. Mm-hmm. So, but. The most we will have will be 50. Okay, yeah. So it's something to consider, and like mm-hmm. I'll, sh- I'll share the slides with you again. Um, and then the other thing on there is that a little bit more of that social acknowledgement. It could just be you pick a student of the week or the month, and you highlight them. Um, and it, it could be that, you know, this student is the student of the week for professionalism. And they showed great professionalism in all of these settings. And it could be that you, you know, you just highlight it in your space that you share, or you could even, um, we do this in our undergrad program, we highlight students on our social media. And, um, you know, what they do well, what they wanna, what they want to, what kind of job they wanna do one day. and it's just can can be an opportunity to kind of brag on your students. Mm-hmm. So that's just another idea. Definitely not something you have to do. But. So yeah, those are you guys got it. My God, always so impressed. Can I come in here? <laughs> so <laughs> just how quickly you're like, oh, let's do this and let's do that. But yeah, okay. Oh yeah. Very cool. <clears throat> Any other questions about um, anything kind of different types of reward systems? I, I have a question. Like, for example, if we acknowledge the student of the week, um, can that potentially like make the other ones feel bad, or is it going to be more like, okay, now I want to like also be the student of the month of the week, and then yeah, I'm gonna work harder. It can do both things. Mm-hmm. It can definitely do both things. Um, and that's that's why I think it's important for you all as a team to decide whether that's something that you want to that choose to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I think maybe yeah. if we remind them, you know, this person won this week, but you'll have another opportunity next week, mm-hmm. and at the beginning of next week, remind everybody, okay, we start over, mm-hmm. so work hard if you, you know, and the whole the whole thing on this incentive is, the whole thing about this is based on incentive. So you have an incentive to do well and strive for getting a reward. So I mean, seeing someone get the reward, yeah, I mean, you're you're gonna be upset if you didn't get it, but that's just more of an incentive for you to try. So I think that sometimes it's you know. You do want to be I, mindful. I, 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 I don't. I don't. Huh. For some people that works and for some people that won't work. Absolutely. Out. So something yeah. that I wanted to say to you because this is I sometimes hear this in the classroom, not mm-hmm. really from our first unless your group. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And our, our rivalry group. I just have heard that like some of the stuff that we do or you know, like I could see like the ticketing thing or the drawing a prize from the prize box being like elementary level. And mm-hmm. they think I'm like they're like why are you treating me like an elementary person you know but it all depends on what they are yeah if it's like gift cards we didn't yeah. do elementary type prizes we didn't do the little bitty fun stick. no but, but when you're talking gift cards that they can go out for like starbucks you're working for a starbucks card it's a whole lot different than not, if they're working wait, for not, and and this is and, and the way you explain it is this is like a paycheck for you doing your job he's not and you have the opportunity to earn dollars that are basically like money. These points are earning points, and those points go for that. Or it could be even something of 
maybe um, I can dismiss a, you can dismiss your lowest grade. I mean, he's talking about like the system itself, not the price. Not the no, price. I, and I understand oh, that. Well, it just seems to be age appropriate. Yes. It, it, yeah. All how it's For presented. Sure. Mm -hmm. If it's presented with a top, I mean, because like she said, in trainings, because I've been to PBI's training mm -hmm. with school districts, it works with adults. Yes, it, everybody likes something yeah. for free. I think, yeah. I think, I think, like, I understand I that part. I'm just worried because our students are not there. Like, they don't think about, oh, it's a, it's, it's a great prize. It's five dollars, you know, or it's a. But it's a, all on how it is presented. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you present it in a childlike attitude, are we? You're going to get it. Mm -hmm. I know. What? Okay. What group are you talking about? Your one or your two? Who? two. Oh, two. yeah. No, we already did it with your two, and they loved it. They did that this summer, and they loved it. Yeah. Like, it worked. Yeah, the ticket thing. We did that with your two, and they loved it. Yeah. 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 So. It, I mean, it is, I definitely agree. It's in how you present it. It has to be developmentally and age appropriate. And the, re the rewards or the reinforcement actually has to act as that. Yeah. So if it's not something that they're gonna want to work toward, then it's not it's not gonna be effective. Yeah. Um, and so, so if I have a little prize box with little bitty trinkets, right? In it, <laughs> yeah. Dinosaurs. Yeah. Little bitty <laughs> kid toys in it. No, it's probably it not gonna work. <laughs> yeah. Even in that Halloween party, when you have the you know the baskets with candies, everybody was excited to win one. Even mm -hmm. I was well, like, they wanted yeah. I participated and too. The same thing that it is. <laughs> I brought. Like the little mints into my the class that I teach, and I just literally throw them at students for asking questions and things, and it's it's definitely in how you present it mm -hmm. and what you're working toward, and if it matches that group of individuals, which mm -hmm. y'all are the experts on, you know your students, and so mm -hmm. it's gonna have to. If you choose to do something like this, you'll have to be very mindful of that and see if it actually works. Mm -hmm. If it isn't working, for, then you can make changes. And when they know it's for doing an adult appropriate thing, yeah, and if it's a skill that they got to know, they'll work even harder for that skill. Okay. But it has to be done in an adult fashion with them. If we present it in any type of child, like if it was gold stars, right. Or stickers. You, or stickers. Yeah. No, that's not going to work because <laughs> that's, that's not what adults do. Because we, oh, sorry. Um, we did it, we did the ticket method and they got what, like Starbucks or mm -hmm. Target gift mm -hmm. card and they loved it. They had a blast. Yeah. Sorry for interrupting you. No, I was going to say, I'm sure all I'm of the students would like a Starbucks um, yeah. card because all of them, I see them with their Starbucks um, mm -hmm. drink. Uh, yeah. I think you bring up a very good point. I'm more just worried because, like, someone who we have, um, like ZS, a student, mm -hmm. um, that would have worked. But it worked this summer. It did work this summer. But I still heard things like, uh, why uh, are we getting treated like babies? Or why did, I don't even like these tickets. I don't. You're but always going to have one. That's, yeah, yeah, you're always going to have one. Well, you're never going to please anybody. I know. I know. I know, no, I know what I know what you're referring to when it comes to ZS. But ZS, I also heard her distinctly bring up like stuff that her actual friends and I'm doing, and I'm sorry, but this program is just not going to be like that. No, so, I mean, that's what I'm more like going for. Like I'm not. But it's going not. But it's not going to be like that though. Like so ZS is complaining because she's not because we're not treating them exactly the way that her friends in undergrad are being treated by their professors and, and in their classes. And I'm, and I'm sorry, but that's just not the way the program's designed. That's not what we do. Yeah, I'm just curious on your thought on it. Like I just yeah. want to know. Like, how do you get around someone who's hard-headed, mm -hmm. this doesn't work, they don't care about any of the reward right. systems. Right, right. How yeah. do you get to them? I guess is my main... I would main ask them point. what what they are willing to work toward. What okay. motivates them? What yeah. motivates them? <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, I think, and that actually is a perfect segue because... <laughs> If you can make the goals that you're working toward individual for the students. Yeah, one more real quick thing to say.
Oh, it's okay. No, we no. moved on. <laughs> <laughs> My arm got tired. <laughs> no, I, I it'll it all fits in, so I promise. No, I'll I know, but I was just vouching for ZS for her group was actually the most competitive, wanting to get the tickets dur during the summer. So, but it it might not work for that individual, and what what motivates us is all is pretty individual it's yeah. what you're interested in and what you want to work for mm -hmm. is probably different than what i'm interested in and what you're interested mm -hmm. in and what you're interested in what you're what you're wanting to work toward and so if those that list of things isn't going to work for that individual Oops. ask them what they want to work for and what is going to to help incentivize and motivate them mm -hmm. yeah I want to so. try these. That's why I want to have one. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm asking so many questions. I want to ask. I want to try these. I think you just want to start a skip. <laughs> hey. I want to try. Oh, <laughs> you I want know? to try Me these too. trainings with <laughs> our students. And you'll find out quick who it will and who it won't work for. Mm -hmm. um, and so mm -hmm. I think you bring up really great points, and it's it's really important to make sure that what you have in place is going to work with students, <laughs> right? Bless you. So the more you can can work well, with them true. and get to know them and what is going to motivate mm -hmm. and incentivize them, then the better you can design something that's going to be effective. So, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. yeah. And so that the last thing here, just working with in, with students, looking at um, how can you support their individual strengths and what they want to work toward. Um, and then supporting that progress toward those goals, which I know this whole program is set up to do. So, mm -hmm. and then celebrate in a way that meets that individual's um, chosen way, yeah, need or preference, right? Mm -hmm. For how they want to be celebrated. So. I got people, or I got students. We got saying, ideas. <laughs> I got our students saying, I wanna walk at the stage and Say something on the graduation. <laughs> not just say, not, 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 not just. Well, they also get not just, they do, not they just, get, not just say something at graduation. You have a lot of students that want to, yeah, roast the program or yeah. So I've 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 heard that. Oh, but yeah. Well, find I know out who they are. Oh, find I know. Out oh, conversation I with them, and if that's what they plan to do, then they will not walk. I, I, well, no, well, no, it's, well, it's, it's, I'm, I'm going back on something that we already talked about in your office, but it was, like, the comment of, like, I know dirt on everyone in the program and stuff, and all well, you, yeah, yeah, I'm not worried about her, she runs around all the time. No, I know what I'm saying, like, I'm, yeah. she does, she but, just likes to but I'm saying, like, that stuff's come up in like, but that is a good, like, uh, not that part, but, no. you know, like, <laughs> no, it's not, no, it's not good. to graduation mm -hmm. and being, like, we yeah. have these, like valedictorian, um, leadership award, you know. They look we don't, forward to we don't all have, we, but do, to do to do that. We'd actually have to start calculating. Do all, and stuff. all of them get it? Something which we could do. She does this. Or just a one certificate. Only two people get an award, an actual plaque. Mm -hmm. One we, is the director's award. The other one is um, picked by their peers. The leadership award. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. do, do we actually? From you and somebody that you choose. We can all meet as a team and decide if you want to. Um, and then the leadership award, I send out a ballot for everybody to vote, who, and I give them criteria to look for in their peers, mm. and then they vote on who that's they really feel awesome. like yeah, um, provided so, the best so leadership of their, of their team. Mm -hmm. Can we, could we actually, could we make it if they really, if it's that important to them? Could we, I'm sure, because you said you calculate GPAs, could we get cords for them? So it feels. They have cords. Oh, yeah. We do. We, we, do we do the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We do the yeah. whole we do all the cords. Mm -hmm. yeah. They get the awesome. AM cap and gown and everything. Oh, no, I they know. spiffy. Yeah. <laughs> we model it exactly after AM graduation. Mm -hmm. Do they do the one? Yeah, so you could tie these things into that. <laughs> you basically have a rubric was, yeah. for your for your reward right here. I was so. thinking about that too. <laughs> so make sure we tell the students, you know, you know, that's what we're going to be looking at. If you're going to be effective, be you know, we need to select that. We need to make a big one, put copies of this, and we can have it by our poster. Yeah, yeah. yeah.
Yeah, yeah. 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 P-A-T-H-S and then office hours it looks like this mm -hmm. and then practicum classroom advising mm -hmm. yeah. you can have the one her part part in your office you yeah. can have one in your office she can have the classroom in uh, her office yeah. Yeah. so yeah. That, that's super easy for me to do if you want me to separate them out I can be happy to that do would that be cool. yeah. <laughs> and advisors that can have little cards we'll yeah. get them little yeah. cards kind of like how we had yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. that would be good mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Any other questions or anything for me? Hopefully this is a, a good starting point. I, I wanted to just kind of present some options and say, you know, here's some good good strategies. Um, and then you can kind of take it and decide as a program what you want to implement. Yeah. So, yeah, no, thank you. And I'm, I'm happy to come along and support any more that you need to, you know, set anything up or, um, you know, whatever. There's got to be a, a train track or something that the education majors have to take for that stuff before they graduate, right? No? No. Um, I'll look in. So I have some questions. Um, for the cooperating teachers in those rooms who are working with your students as paraprofessionals? Okay. Um, or in your... Their practicum yeah, that's what I'm asking. Oh, which, okay. which setting are you talking about? Oh, at their practicum site, that's me. Yeah, okay. they have three settings. They have... Um, our generals are working in like nursing home settings. Okay. Our paras are working for schools. Schools. Mm -hmm. And then we have our child care folks who are working in daycare. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I provide coaching <laughs> in in both daycare settings and school settings as part of my program. Um, and there's other people in the program who can come in and provide that too. Um, if if you want it to there's to be some consistency there that's an option um the and then that you use when you coach is that something that you have laid out that you could share with Shirley that she could teach in the classroom and then maybe we could go out and coach in those specific so like, skills we want to make sure that they are um you know consistent uh, across the board mm -hmm. well no that's not what I'm, that's not the word I'm looking for they're um, you know the latest and greatest research based yeah strategies. yeah um, and actually, I think it would be helpful to be connected back with Lindsay, who does the, yeah. the Project TAP, mm -hmm. um, because that's that's a whole training structure that is specifically for paraprofessionals that's all based on evidence-based strategies. And all of this that we've done here today definitely is based on evidence-based strategies, too. Um, but they're, they, they're looking for coaching opportunities as well, like in, in class too so I will if y'all are comfortable I can send an email and kind of connect you with her um, yeah. I know you have previously worked with her and yeah. over the summer to do she was that awesome training. she did a great job teaching our um, students but the next part of that program is really looking at the in the field part of mm -hmm. getting it so um, yes I think there's there's lots of different as as a coach of future teachers I definitely have resources that you can use in your classes and then um, we have other resources that we can set you up with for. Um, would you guys do training on that? Like, uh, that would be, uh, which part of it? Like the island job training, like coaching. Yeah, so uh, for, like going on yes, we definitely. Yes, yeah. And that's, that's really what uh, Lindsay's project is looking to, it's actually Dr. Thompson, give credit where. <laughs> Lindsay's the graduate assistant, the me on that project. 
Um, so they're looking at actually getting in the field and doing that as, as the next part of that project. So yeah, they could definitely do that. Do you know anyone who would provide like CPI training? Oof. Um, I, I don't. I think that would probably be the regional offices, actually, the regional ESC offices, okay. educational service centers. Um, we're part of Region 6, right? Um, they are probably the ones to provide that. Um, or the individual school districts, because that's a, a insurance liability thing. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I've reached out to someone that I know with the Bryan School District, the number of Oh. And I assume that they weren't able to do it. I don't know. Mm. Let me shoot an email. Yeah, let me see. Dana's the one I checked with. I'll, I'll, I'll check with you. I'll check with the bishop. I don't know if the school district is doing that or um, yeah, if they're working in a specific school district, the school district usually likes to be the one to provide that training because then it's under their liability mm -hmm. insurance coverage, all of that yeah. kind of stuff. But our so. students could take, if they're going to a school district, they could take they that could. CPI training when they're offering it. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And that would yes. be beneficial if they could do that. Maybe so that's like the that two that I have at EISD, um, the two that I have at DISD, I have to talk to Shannon. To Geo Coach. I don't know what that is. <laughs> We're the toughest in the field. <laughs> Best program. Um, Robin. Uh, Robin's sister. Yeah. Mary. Because even I learned, even I learned a lot of stuff in the time that I, like,